My name is uh, Dimitris Andriadis. I've been working on EAP in every possible capacity for the last uh, 15 years. And now I'm herding open source developers. So I'm the engineering manager of the EAP team and the Wildfly community project. EAP is a Java EE application server, and as such, it can be used to solve a wide uh, spectrum of, of problems, and customers can use it from anything from financial applications, you know, shopping carts, um, integration use cases, and so on and so forth. It's, it's very flexible, so you can adapt it to your own use case. I think the most important bit that you get with EAP is you get a very good and manageable runtime yeah. that implements a comprehensive set of APIs from which you pick and choose and use whatever you want without much of the runtime overhead. EAP is important for developers because it provides you with a generic runtime which is fully manageable and it it gives you a comprehensive set of APIs from which we can choose what you want to use, and it's guaranteed to work. It's tested extensively uh, by us and our QE, so uh, you have a very solid infrastructure to start with. I think what developers mostly like about EAP is its speed. So it starts it's very fast, two, three seconds on a developer laptop. And it's not cheating, so when, it, when we start, we actually do start about two-thirds of the services. We don't do lazy loading. We do for some services. So um, you, you feel the speed in your day-to-day -day work. You, you, know, you can redeploy very quickly. You can start, you can stop, so it, it's, it's very nice. E EAP is really the Swiss Army knife of application servers, which means it can be as big or as small as you want. So for example, if you run standalone or on bare metal, you can have EAP as one instance, or you can have a domain with you know, hundreds of EAP instances managed by you. Or you can deploy natively in the cloud, uh, reduce EAP to the subset that you just use, or just leave it like this, and EAP will, you know, will still run fast and will consume uh, very few resources. You know, we can run EAP with just two open ports. Uh, it, it's very flexible, so we can cover a wide spectrum of use cases inside or outside the clouds. People associate EAP with Java EE. I know that's very true. We are one of the best implementations out there, but Due to the flexibility of the implementation, you can deploy this in many different ways. You can do microservices with the AP, either with the whole server or with a cut-down version of the server. And you still get the guarantee that the, the total, the sum of the components will work as you expect and will be patched and will be secure, which it's not something you get easily from any other customized environment. One common pl problem of uh, developers is uh, s scale, how you can scale your application, you know, higher numbers, higher clients, uh, transactions throughput. So in EP7, we have a, our new web server embedded in EP. It's a new project called, well, new, three years now, a project called Undertow which is designed to be uh, asynchronous at its core, meaning we can really scale up to you know, thousands of connections without problem. So then you have the ability to implement some reactive pattern uh, and solve you know, the problem of having you know, thousands of clients. So that's a very common scenario we can solve now. With AP7 and Undertow at its core as the web server, we can now handle you know, orders of magnitude, more connections coming into the server uh, without any performance imp implications. Uh, and we can also do the reverse thing. You can deploy EAP as a reverse proxy. So you can replace, essentially, uh, Apache HTTPD 
and have a fully manageable environment, load balancers and backend servers. In EP7, we've also changed the, the messaging provider. In EP6, we had uh, Hornet Q. Uh, and Red Hat had now two, let's say, competing messaging implementations, Hornet Q and, and ActiveMQ. So the two projects have been merged uh, under the auspices of Apache. And we now have the Apache ActiveMQ Artemis. Uh, variation, which is the new messaging provider in EAP, which combines the good elements of Hornet queue with the myriads of connectors of uh, uh, ActiveMQ. One of the new features in EAP7 is the graceful shutdown capability, which is particularly interesting in uh, cloud environments, because in, you know, in the cloud you can scale up, but you can also scale down. and Often scaling down is a much harder problem to solve, so you have to more or less uh, stop accepting new requests and let the in-flight transactions complete before uh, you know, getting to a halt. One of the cool features of EAP7 is the new offline mode. In this mode, you can uh, start the server, essentially embed it inside the command line interface, the CLI. And you can configure the server without any services running or ports being open and persist it down to disk, this configuration. And with that, you can create configurations suitable for containerized uh, environment. Another cool feature in EP7 is the batch uh, functionality, which is defined by the EE7 spec. So we were part of the uh, specification group, and we came up with our own uh, implementation called J Beret. Um, and it gives you a very nice ability to do uh, batch style processing, um, much like the things you would typically do with mainframes, uh, you know, if you want to migrate your old, old applications. What's really pronounced in AP7 is the compatibility guarantees uh, relative to the old version. So for example, uh, you can load an EP6 configuration in EP7. And there are facilities to let you migrate this configuration to the new server. You can let EP7 manage EP6 servers. And you can have calls between the different versions. And this is going to work, which is pretty cool. EAP is free to use for development purposes, so you can just go on our website and download it and, and, and play with it and, and see if it, if it works for you. Uh, I, I truly think it's an excellent piece of technology.